Well, hello everybody, Pastor Andrew here. Welcome to Making It Simple. What a great day it is to be with you today. It's another beautiful Monday as we're kicking off the week. And I hope that uh, all of you are doing great wherever you are. I hope you had a great weekend. And uh, so we're going to jump right back into our lesson, The Correction of God. We've been talking about the last uh, lesson or two was about the how. How, how do we move to that place? Because in this passage, we see a reference to family. How do I get into that? How, how do I get there? Well, we talked about the how, as we talked about last week, you know, accepted Christ coming clear to him. He spoke to Nicodemus. You must be born again. That word must is important because it's a requirement. It is a, I have to, a, it, it's, it's a component that can't be left out. That's, that's the how. That's the how. The accepting Christ, the, the belief of the price that he paid for us at Calvary. So one is in. One's there. They, they're part of the family. They, they are now a child of God. But then we learn that with that comes correction, which moves us to the why. So we know how we get there, how we develop this place but now now we now we move into the heart of the matter the correction of god why well let's look at it from this way when our children are born and most of us have had that pleasure in life not everybody but but the majority of us have man when they first get here they are sweet and innocent and perfect little angels, right? I mean, that that's just how we see them. They, they just can't do anything wrong until they do. Until we first witness it happen. And then almost instantaneously, almost, it just, just, they just magically appear, those words, those dreaded words, they seem to form and they come flying out of our mouth. Stop that. No, you cannot. Go to your room. And various other phrases that come along the way. Some of those, they're not in the church handbook. We're stunned. We're, we're saddened. We're shocked because we're exposed to the fact of the harsh reality that our little angels, they need correction. Because if we don't, they won't learn. If we don't, they'll actually get worse. So why does God correct his children? The very same reason we correct ours. He loves us. We love them. The, the, the old phrase, this hurts me, more than it does you. It never made sense. Never made sense to me at all growing up. But as a dad, as a, as a parent, as a father, now you get it. It makes sense. It, it hurts that the correction is necessary, that it has to be. In fact, Scripture says in the book of Proverbs that if we don't correct our children, we hate them. Now, I don't think there's any one of us that would ever say we hate our children. We may not like what they do. We may not approve of all of their decisions, choices, what have you. But none of us could ever say we hate them. God doesn't hate us. And we certainly do a lot of things that hurt him, disappoint him, sadden him, grieve him, Scripture says. It hurts that it's necessary. But I love you enough to carry it out. I love you enough to say no. I love you enough to take that away. I love you enough to correct you so that your life will improve later. So that you will look back on that moment of correction, not with disdain, not with anger, but with gratefulness that you love me enough to say no. You love me enough to stop that. You love me enough 
to correct me in my wrong attitude or whatever the case. Now, just with anything else, people can take that stuff too far. People harm children. When we move over to abuse, that's not love. That's not correction. That's domineering. That's just being a jerk. That doesn't help that child. That harms that child, both physically and mentally. That's not what we're talking about because God doesn't do that. God never harms us. But the correction of God sometimes stings because the truth hurts. The correction of God sometimes causes disappointment and even discouragement because we didn't get our way. But that's exactly how it felt when we were corrected as children and how our children feel when we correct them. I, I still have young children at home and they don't like being told no. And they don't like being told they can't have this or that or go here or wear that because we're in the teenage years. And yeah, old dad, that's the dinosaur, is not hip and up to date with all the great uh, new fashion statements these days. But I still get to say no. We see here in verse 11, it says, my son, this is the family reference. This is not just strictly, again, one place okay my son despise not in other words that word means despise means to regard with disdain uh to look down on he said don't think that what my action and my my response the consequence to what you're doing don't look on that as a bad thing Look on that of where it comes from, the heart of God, the, the, the love that I have for you. It says, don't despise the chastening, the correction of the Lord. It, it honestly shouldn't, it shouldn't seem strange. It shouldn't even be a surprise. In fact, if at times we're told no, and we're told stop that, because... We're part of the family of God. We're God's children. God doesn't hate his children. God loves his children. What we need to grasp, what we need to understand is the correction. The correction. It lets us know he cares. See, again, scripture says, if you don't correct your children, you hate them. If you withhold correction, you, you, are, you are not helping them. That's one of the struggles that I have as I see in society today. Rather than toe the line, rather than hold things to the, a higher level of standard, we continue to lower the bar. And what is the result of that, Ben? You know, I realize that times change and things are evolving and whatever. We can use all these different things. But manners never should be outdated. Respect should never be outdated. Yes, I grew up in the era to where no meant no. Uh, spankings, they did happen. Um, you said yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am to your mother. Yes, sir, and no, sir to your dad. And to those older than you, you respected teachers and, and people of authority and police officers and, and whatever, whatever you did. Because that was the right thing to do, because it made you a better person. It may not be because that person deserves that respect, but their position or whatever the case, their age, it called for it. Because ultimately, the lesson from that was you become a respected person. But we're not seeing that anymore. But the fact that God corrects us, it lets us know that he cares. It lets us know that he loves us. His correction proves, it cements the fact that we are part of the family of God. Because if one is saying today, well, God don't ever do anything for me or to me or about, then you should evaluate that relationship. Because he says he corrects those he loves. Well, God loves everybody, right? That's what we're told. 
But are you part of the family of God? Was it everybody? No. I know we like to believe that that you know, everybody makes it. But friends, that's not what Scripture says. We have to accept the invitation. Everybody can do that. I do not, under any circumstance, believe that God has chosen and appointed only a few that can receive and hear and accept that invitation. I, I grab and hold on to whosoever. That means anybody that wants it can have it. But if I don't receive it, in other words, if I don't accept that invitation, then I don't have it. It's just like laying a dollar bill or a five dollar bill or whatever on the table and say, hey, you can have this. But if I walk away from that table and I do not receive that gift, I don't put it in my pocket. It's not mine. I didn't take it with me. So therefore, I don't get the benefit of that. If I don't accept and receive Christ and what he's done for me at the cross and receive that gift of eternal life that he's given me and the salvation of being able to spend eternity with him in heaven, then I don't have it. He doesn't just automatically give it to me. I have to receive it. He offers it. I have to receive it. And if I don't do that, then it's not mine. The correction of God. When we understand, friends, that it's the love of God that calls for the correction, then it begins to allow us to not despise it. That's part of the why. We'll pick back up on the rest of that tomorrow and the continuation of this lesson. God bless you. Thank you for joining me today.